This video goes along with the Beer Shift blog series part 3. In this video I'm going to show you how to download and configure Titanium Studio to use the Beer Shift backend web services source code. First thing we'll want to do is open up Titanium Studio. Once Titanium Studio is loading it's going to prompt you for a workspace location. I'm going to go ahead and select the default workspace but keep this location in mind as we're going to need it a little later in the video. Once Titanium Studio has loaded, we'll want to import the project from GitHub. In order to do that, simply click the Import Project button on the left hand side, select Git, and then Git Repository as New Project, and click on Next. It's going to ask us for the URI of our Git repository. I'm going to quickly open up Safari and go to github.com slash beershift slash beershift web and I'm going to click Git Read Only and I'm going to copy this URL. I'm going to go back to Titanium Studio, paste that in, make a note of the destination, and click Finish. Now my project has been created, I'm going to go ahead and click on Open Project and my source code for the BeerShift web project is presented to me. I just want to quickly run through this and explain how this is happening and then we'll deploy it up to OpenShift. If I expand the PHP directory, this is using the CodeIgniter framework. CodeIgniter is a model view controller framework for the PHP language. A couple dependencies that I've added to that is the Mongo PHP driver as well as the REST controller for REST API development. If I expand application and then config, a couple of things I want to go over here in the config file config.php you'll need to scroll to the very bottom of this file and update your API key with the one that you created based on the blog post. Also I want to quickly show you the mongodb PHP file. Once you deploy this you'll know that this magically just works and it's automatically talking to mongodb. The way this happens is via environment variables. Instead of specifying the host and the port, username and password, I'm using environment variables that OpenShift sets for you on your host. This way this code will be portable across all users so once you deploy it, it should just work for you. Let's take a quick look at the application code itself. I have a controller called API. Now with REST based web services you can think of REST integration or rest calls with a noun verb syntax. So the first function is user and I'm going to call a HTTP GET request on that user and I'm expecting to see a username. If I don't see one I'm going to return a 400. If I do see a username I'm going to lowercase that username and then look up that user from the Mongo database. So let's take a look at that. So you'll see once I have the username I call this user model get user. So if I expand the model section of my model view controller, I do have a simple user model here, and I have a get user method that takes a username. The first thing I do is load the MongoDB uh, driver. I then do a this MongoDB get where users, and I pass in the username that I'm uh, looking for. I then return that directly to the user. Pretty straightforward. There's no SQL here. This is a NoSQL database. It's very active record like. Um, so you can look at all the source code here uh, to create a user, same thing. For this demonstration though, um, to make it easy for people to debug as they're getting things working, I am not encrypting the password. You can see here that I have commented this line out. Now if you're doing this in production, you probably would want to use a better encryption than what I have now. You'll want to salt your passwords as well and, and have an encrypted uh, password solution there. But for this blog post I didn't think that was necessary and I thought it might be easier for people if they could look at their passwords while they're uh, debugging the application. That's basically it for the code. The other thing I want to show you real quick is how to add your OpenShift repository to this project. So I'm going to open up a command line or a terminal application. Let me make the text just a little bit bigger here. Clear this. So I'm in my Titanium workspace and I have a BeerShift web directory so I'm going to CD into that. As we can see if I do a git info here it's not a uh, 
it's not assigned to my OpenShift repository yet. So I can do RHC domain show and pass in my username. I'll quickly authenticate. It's going to list all of my repositories that I have out there. Now here's the beer shift one and I have a get URL. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to type in git remote add openshift and paste in that URL. I now have openshift added as a or as a remote repository for my project. I can then change any files and then say git push openshift and it'll push it up to my openshift server and be deployed for me. That's all there is to it. In the next blog post, we're going to walk through the mobile application source code, get that up and running, and I'll also have a video that walks you through the application code on the mobile side and step by step to show you what each line and each block of code does. Thanks for watching.